Hello my soccer universe! The second round of the Austrian Cup provides us with a very very special duel that I think is worth making another rivalry video, although this is the first time that these two teams are meeting. However, there's plenty of history when SV Austria Salzburg are gonna meet Red Bull Salzburg in the Austrian Cup. And it gives me the opportunity to rehash probably the most infamous chapter or most infamous recent chapter in Austrian uh, soccer history, which is of course the Red Bull takeover of the old Austria Salzburg. But in order to understand why this was such a big thing, we have to talk about the old Austria Salzburg. So the old Austria Salzburg itself was formed in 1933 as a merger of a couple of teams, uh, most notably uh, one team that was called Rapid Salzburg, who of course played in green and white like Rapid Vienna. And then they called themselves in Austria Salzburg and played in purple and white, which is of course similar to Austria Vienna. So I found this a very, very interesting uh, footnote in the his history. That team, like most of the teams outside of Vienna, didn't make a big dent in the Austrian scene until, let's say, the 60s, uh, 50s, I think, the 41st, and they were in the first league, but you know, in the 60s. Only in 1970, I think they won uh, the second, uh, they were second in the Austrian league, had some ups and downs and so on, uh, had some good cup runs in there, were an established team in Salzburg, however, were not a team that was seen, you know, well supported in Salzburg, in Salzburg, but not one of the really, really big hitters, which actually then changed in the early 90s under coach Otto Baric when Austria Salzburg in 92 and now the 93 twice finished only in second place, level with the uh, preeminent team of the time, which was Austria Vienna, level on points. Uh, and there was even the big showdown in 92 where the two title contenders met in the big stadium in Vienna where Austria Vienna won it and that's why they became the champions thanks to superior goal difference. However, this was only the prelude. At that time, uh, Austria Salzburg also, also was seen, yes, this might be a real a deal team and since outside of Vienna you always support like the teams that are not from there, they kind of got, got out of the fan base, but it went through the roof in the 93-94 season. Yes, they won for the first time the Austrian Championship, but what's even more important is they were the third ever Austrian team to reach a European Cup final with a run to the UEFA Cup final. Previous finals by Austria and Rapid had only been to the Cup Winners' Cup. They reached the UEFA Cup final, which at the time had more in common with the Champions League than the Champions League itself in a way. Because uh, it was Champions League was only the champions. You had the next best teams in there, and on this run, which <laughs> almost any Austrian football fan from the time will tell you, they beat first to Nice Castreda, then ousted Royal Antwerp, who were cup, who who, uh, who were the finalists of the Cup Winners' Cup the year before, and then in a very famous uh, tie, they faced Sporting Lisbon who had great players like Krasimir Balakov and, more importantly, Luis, a young Luis Figo in there as well. So really, really big. They lost 2-0 away from home, but then in uh, December, in the return leg, in the last minute, they got the equalizer and then won it in overtime, meaning that for the first time in a long time, an Austrian team actually survived through the winter. And that gathered them a lot of steam. They were also again in a title fight with Austria Vienna. And that carried care forward. And they saw, who are we playing next? It was Eintracht Frankfurt. An Eintracht team that was really on fire in that season, at least in the early season. And suddenly demand for tickets went so through the roof that they couldn't play in the small stadium in Salzburg anymore. They went and made the trip to Vienna. Sold out. Beat Eintracht Frankfurt 1-0 at home. Lost the return like 1 0, however, won on penalties and goalie Otto Konrad, uh, convert, not saving one and then converting the um, decisive one, became a national hero. And this Salzburg team was very attractive, uh, especially with young people, because not only were they not from Vienna, which is a huge deal, whole Austria could support them, but they also had, and especially for the young, uh, younger girls, a lot of attractive looking players like Otto Conrad, like a Heimer Pfeifenberger and, and so on, which added to their appeal big time. Semi-final, 
they ousted another German team in Karlsruhe and this was for the first time an Austrian team had ousted teams from Western Germany slash Germany that it was. And so they were in the final against Inter Milan where they lost two games 1-0 and to be honest I mean uh, in hindsight they didn't play attractively at all but they were very 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 efficient. Against Inter in the first leg they had no had not really a chance Nicola Berti scores the first goal. Second leg, first half, yeah, they were hanging on, but then they really mounted the challenge. And only when Wim Young, after Bergkamp assist, uh, scored the 1 0, yeah, it seemed like it was gone, but there was still the shot by Marquinhos hitting the two cross, uh, the two uprights in one shot and going out. It could have turned the other way. They repeated success, they were the first team to qualify for the Champions League, where, yes. They were also by Ajax and Milan, the two finalists from their group. Also some controversy there in their away game at uh, Milan. Uh, won another championship, but then the team fell apart. Finished eight the season thereafter, couldn't qualify for the Champions League again. Stauer Bucharest ended their run. And then uh, they got another championship out of nowhere with a rebuilt squad in 96, 9, 97. But it was not to last. The team then... First a little bit up, but more and more got into financial troubles. Uh, bad, um, uh, there, uh, it was all the bad management of the squad. And so by the mid 2000s, this was a team that actually went from the most supported and most popular team in Austria, especially in the golden era. I will say the mid 90s, they were the team. And it was too to the point that whenever they came to another game, so many teenagers and especially teenage girls were following them around. They were rock stars. They were kind of a little bit of an afterthought and a thing of the past. And there was serious trouble, that, uh, serious doubt that they will actually manage to get uh, on and might actually get relegated. <music> And so in 2005, while looking for potential uh, investors, President Quinberger could got an agreement with the Red Bull Group, who so far had only sponsored um, individual athletes, not ever, not ever a team. And they got in there, and at first it was yes, Red Bull, huge company, Salzburg is gonna be Salzburg again. But that didn't last long, because once the season was over, uh, Red Bull showed their real face and said, <laughs> this is a new club, there is no history, nothing like that. We're going to start with a clean slate. And we're going to change from Austria Salzburg colors, which actually had been called for a long time Casino Salzburg, like here. So uh, it was not that the sponsor names, which is not unusual in Aust Austria. Uh, but then it was not called an SV Red Bull Salzburg, you know, it's, it's take the Austria out and put the Red Bull in. Uh, it was called FC Red Bull Salzburg and it was branded as a completely new team. No purple and white, which were the colors of this team. No, it is now red and white. We are only taking Red Bull colors. Huge outcry. They, of course, an initiative was formed in the issue uh, blue, uh, not blue purple and white and they were fighting for the, their um, club that you cannot take over. Now this was not without precedent within Austria because when Swarovski took over Wacker Innsbruck they also changed the colors to blue and white from green and black. However the big difference was is that back in the mid 80s there was not an ultras movement that was really looking out for the traditional colors of a club. This time around there was a fan club, there was a fan base, and there was a small altars movement that actually said, you cannot do this. You cannot erase the history of the club just like that, and then come out with red and white. It fell to a very, fell to a very quickly a split in the supporters of uh, this new FC Red Bull Salzburg, where one part said, okay, we take Red Bull. We take Red Bull with everything because, you know, we, didn't have, we wouldn't have a club if it wasn't uh, for them. And we actually will have a successful club. And the other ones that said, no, we cannot stand for that. Uh, that we have a club that is taking away our identity and it's now all red and white. It actually became world news in a way, or at least on a soccer level, it became world, world news. This was a plight of fans and suddenly there were many solidarities within Austria, 
all the Austrian top teams in the first and second league, the fan group suddenly supported, you know, this cannot happen to Salzburg. And even for Lask, who did not have a good relationship, the fan bases, because, you know, it's relatively close between Linz and Salzburg, so there's a natural rivalry there. Actually, a bigger rivalry than with some of the local teams, one could argue. But even they went out, this cannot be. In Salzburg, only Austria. No other team should be there, and it's only purple and white. This is what we want to have. And there were many uh, European teams that were supporting them, and also outside of Europe, there were some supporters, no, notably two teams from MLS, even joined those um, uh, protests against the new modern football uh, FC Red Bull Salzburg. Now, well, those protests became very prominent. And remember, this was in a time leading up to the 2006 World Cup in Germany. So where there was many, um, uh, there was a lot of coverage on to that. The initiative Purple and White tried to negotiate with the new club ownership. You know, can we have at least uh, remain on purple? However, Red Bull was adamant. We are a new club. However, one part, that they, the part that they did not get is that they are really a new club because a new club in Austria can start in the Bundesliga. A new club needs to take over another club and remain that. So instead of the founding date being 2005, they needed to keep 1933. However, they don't, still don't recognize any of these championships. Uh, so the three from Austria Salzburg, they don't recognize by themselves. However, uh, Officially, this is still the same team. They tried to offer a compromise and say, you know, okay, we see you. And there was still choreographies made in purple and white by the active fans. In, um, but the breaking point came when the offer was made. Red Bull Salzburg, okay, as a token of goodwill, the captain's armband will be purple. Back then, that Adidas shirts, we will have a purple Adidas logo. And the goalkeeper will pre, uh, wear purple socks. And that's the maximum we can give you. That broke it all. And so the fan base that were on board with the Red Bull part stayed with them. The other fan base said, we need, we are going to go down the way that Wimbledon went and Manchester United uh, fans went and we will found our own club. Now, after this compromise, when Red Bull actually released their jerseys, you see here that classic Red Bull away jersey, which was in dark blue and yellow. And I was among many that thought, what's all the fuss? Okay, play in white and red at home, but couldn't you have made those away jerseys in purple instead of blue? I mean, it is so close. Was it really necessary? But I guess they wanted to stand their ground. And so while Red Bull Salzburg from now on did not finish any time worse than second place and has been a dominant force, a force that will be worth its own video once Lask is going to play uh, Red Bull, um, it is Austria Salzburg that I want to mention here a little bit more. The new Austria Salzburg that was then found. <laughs> So this new Austria Salzburg uh, founded itself already in 2005 then from the ashes uh, of uh, this split and they actually uh, then said okay uh, we will gladly take over the three championships that legally don't belong to them but the Red Bull uh, concert is pushing towards them. And at first there was like, uh, they played to, to get away with another club, but this was not amount of uh, work. So they had to start in 2006 from the very bottom. But with four successive promotions, they made it into the third tier. And even so far that, that they managed to get promoted in 2015 to the second tier. For the first time, Austria Salzburg was back in professional leagues. However, they also did not do all the finances, they got in financial trouble and they had to get relegated, they had a deduction, they would have actually maintained 
top class status on the sporting level however because you went through uh, a liquidation process that actually saved the club in a way uh, they had to be relegated and then they got relegated again and at the moment fourth league and then they went back to the third tier this is where they currently are very well supported uh, the problem is that most of these Austria fans still for instance have because in this uh, one league, uh, one season that they played in sec, second league, they of course had to play Lusk, which was a game that was notoriously difficult to schedule because of the rivalry between the two fan bases. It is a very vocal fan base, um, much more raw than, for instance, the fan base for Red Bull Salzburg. However, the team, meanwhile, has itself somewhat established, is uh, on a solid, if not great, financial footing. And that leads us now to the big duel in the Austrian Cup. Now for this duel in the Austrian Cup, uh, no one was really happy, to be honest. And this makes this uh, game even more special. Because Red Bull Salzburg, uh, they don't really care about their old foes, all that the that, that, that much worse Austria Salzburg. Has a serious, had serious troubles finding a ground for this uh, match. Very much so that, you know, they could not play in their current stadium, which is a very, very small stasis stadium in Salzburg, uh, where they, ca they don't even have the conditions to host um, now a second tier level football. Um, they had, they will not play in the Red Bull Arena and Red Bull definitely said, no, we're not going to give this to you because, you know, you don't like us. And how do you even think, think about it? So there were only two options. Lusk made them a generous offer to have this played in Linz, but they all said, nah, this should be played at least in Salzburg. Well, it is not played in Salzburg, but in a suburb of Salzburg, Grödig, which was one of the suburb teams that in the mid 2000s actually was quite successful and made it to the top league as well. They played there, they have to play there, and yeah, it will not be a sellout. Uh, I mean, it will be a sellout, but it will not be a huge crowd, but at least it will be played in a ground fit for the occasion. And so, yeah, I hope this was an interesting uh, background to this derby. The first time that these two teams are meeting. So while there's a rivalry because on this Red Bull takeover of Salzburg, it is not a rivalry that grew on the field, but it makes it a very, very interesting game. One that has been shown in prime time on Austrian TV. And so let me know what you knew about this, ri or this, 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 this rivalry. Of course, most of Austria will support the small team from Salzburg and not Red Bull. But hey, there it goes. Give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to you if you want to see more stories from Austria and more. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.